Thanks, Nathaniel. Um, so yes, I'll be talking, welcome, first of all. Um, I'll be talking about hollow views, which uh, we hope will make the exploration of data much easier, much more interactive, um, and yes, so I'll get started. Um, so this is a library I've been working on together with James Bednar and John Luke Stevens for about two years now. And what is going on? Well, <laughs> quickest talk yet, yeah. Good stuff. All right. All right, there we go. All right, so the slogan for Hollow Views is stop plotting your data, annotate your data, and let it reveal itself. So we'll be finding out what that actually means. But before we get there, let's, it's a bit small, but we'll get there. Um, so when you, usually when you're plotting data, what you're doing is you're giving it step-by-step -step instructions, imperative commands, to start tweaking the individual details of a plot. So here we have some two examples, which you clearly can't read, but that's partially the point. Um, so here we've plotted just two subplots uh, using both matplotlib and bokeh. And you can see there's about 20 lines of code each here, um, which just generates a scatter plot, uh, which is uh, with various categories. And this is just a data set of some mammalian species. And uh, I think this is the gestation length against uh, the neonatal birth weight. And as you can see, we have to open a figure. In both cases, we open a figure, and then we open some axes, and we, we tweak each individual detail. And that takes quite a lot of effort. And when you're doing exploration of data, that's not really what you want to do. You want to focus on the data itself. You want to deal, we want, you want to really focus on the uh, relationships between different variables. And so various libraries uh, that are more data-centric, such as Pandas, Seaborn, or X-Ray, let you focus on the data itself. So they provide easy means to quickly generate a plot. And so you can have faceted plots very easily in a few lines of code. However, as soon as you want to start tweaking these plots, um, you basically, you're back to this approach. You're back to um, an imperative approach where you, you customize individual axes, and that really takes a lot of effort. And if you're trying to iterate over different plot types and so on, that takes quite a while. So Holoviews takes a little bit of a different approach. So, um, my is not working. Sorry about that. Right, there we are. Sorry about that. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> Not my birthday, someone else. Are you playing Pokemon Go? No. Okay. Um, so all we have here is, so first of all, start the imports and so on. Okay, so all we have here is a data set, and this is just a data set. It's a publicly available data set of some mammalian species uh, with 11 columns, uh, the order of the species, the body mass, the temperature of their environment. So a lot of individual variables that you might want to explore and you want to see the, the statistical relationships between. And so uh, using Seaborn as, or other libraries, that actually could, could be pretty easy, but you, you're generating one static plot at a time, and if you want to really iterate, that takes a while. So Holoviews takes a different approach. So here we've simply passed this pandas data frame to a Holoviews data structure called the data set. And as you can see, uh, it simply, it gives you a list of the various dimensions that are in this data set. And so we want to start, actually, we want to see various relationships and we want to do this quickly. So we might want to assign some variables to a set of scatter points. And so if we execute this, what we actually get is um, here we can see it's the gestation length against the neonatal body mass. Um, but we've also said we want to view this additional variable, which is the order. And uh, because we haven't decided, assigned it to the points themselves, what we actually get is a drop down menu for each of these uh, various mammalian orders. Um, so we can view them individually, and that works nicely. Um, but that's generally, and you can do, you can do this with. Uh, any high dimensional plot. Uh, so, so we might have additional dimensions here. So uh, what other dimensions could you imagine? So it could be any number of dimensions. And you can imagine you can have additional drop downs to explore those. You could have sliders. And all that would happen automatically using Holoviews. 
but that's just one way of viewing data, and it's probably not the most efficient if you have to select each individual dimension, and it takes, again, uh, it's not the best way to explore this data. So what you might want to do instead is you might want to say, actually, I want to overlay these various uh, orders, and Holoviews automatically, when you say, when you tell it to overlay data like this, it will automatically generate, generate your legend, it'll color your points by, uh, by the order, and give you a plot like this. Um, and again, instead of overlaying, you might want to facet instead, and if we do that, uh, you get a bunch of plots, uh, each for, for each individual order, um, very, very quickly. Um, so we can actually compare these, vari these variables across the orders very easily, and it doesn't, obviously this could be any kind of data set. Um, and just to show that you're, in fact, you're not just limited to either faceting or overlaying, uh, you can chain these operations. So you might have an additional dimension. So here we have this additional dimension, which is just whether uh, the species is a social species. So usually whether it uh, has, uh, it usually is found in groups of one or more. And so here we faceted by the fact whether they're social or not. And uh, we've also still overlaid it uh, by the order. So again, just by chaining these two methods, we can generate this really, really compli complicated plot. And there is no, there is no additional plotting, plotting calls here. It's literally just these two method calls. So, um, so that's, and you can imagine there could be additional dimensions here, and those could be sliders, uh, those could be drop downs, those could be uh, viewed in any number of ways. Um, and so, so, so far, we've, that's how you can group data in different ways and explore it uh, very easily. Uh, Holoviz also provides various methods to easily uh, actually analyze the data. So you might want to aggregate uh, by the order and then display it as a set of bars. Um, so here, if we execute this, what we get is now a, plot, a bar plot for each order uh, of the gestation length, the mean gestation length. And again, it's just by chaining these methods, uh, we can get that very easily. And we've additionally also sorted the data just as an additional operation. Um, and one further thing you, Holoviz makes very easy, you can have very, very complicated uh, grids or other data structures. So here, uh, this is again using Bokeh. Um, we plotted the relationship between these three variables against each other using an operation called a grid matrix. And that actually lets you do things like uh, interactively uh, scrub this data so you can see the relationships. It also provides uh, linked zooming tools. Um, so there's quite a lot of interactivity with just really a single line of, a single declarative plotting call, which, which cre creates a declarative data structure. Um, so I'll briefly switch back here, sorry. It'll go better this time. So these are various operations you can apply to your data, and uh, it makes it really easy to create statistical plot types. Um, but so far, we've focused mostly on pandas-type data structures. Mm, so that's co columnar table-like data structures, really. Um, Holoviz also provides means to actually explore gridded data sets. So as you might see in various domains, such as often the case in uh, climatology or other data, uh, uh, astronomy, I think, as well. Um, so we also provide interfaces to X-Array and Iris, um, which are often used in those domains. And so if I go back to our notebook, uh, I can briefly show you an example of this. So here we, we've just loaded um, a data set from X-Array. It's just a default data set, it's just it's some air temperatures over time. And again, using these very same methods that we used before to um, Explore the tabular data sets, we now execute this. And what we get is the air temperature by latitude and longitude over time. And we can drag the slider and we can see this temperature, the weather patterns evolve over the course of a single month. Um, so yes, uh, that's it for me. Um, I'll be, so I've shown you how you can really quickly interactively explore data sets using both Matplotlib and Bokeh just by uh, chaining a few methods and wrapping your data set in all of these data structures. Uh, John Luke will now tell you a bit more about how you can, how this actually works and how you can customize and exp uh, basically yeah, improve these. Thanks. 
so I'll be talking a little bit about how you can come take, start from here, which is about exploration, and move on to uh, do other things, such as publication, tweaking your plots, and I'll also be talking a little bit about what's actually happening behind the scenes. So uh, just to reiterate what Philip's been saying, you know, with a couple of lines of code, you can get some pretty sophisticated plots, which are interactive, that you can uh, actually, you know, learn something from very quickly, uh, and note that there's actually nothing in this notebook except for the pandas data frame that was uh, loaded. So there's no, nothing except holoviews was used here. Um, and you just need the da pandas data frame to generate all these plots. And then you might have noticed when uh, Philip was going through all this that you have these little wrappers. And this is actually one of the key reasons that holoviews is a bit different from sort of a typical visualization library. Uh, what's happening here is that you're taking your data, which is high dimensional, and you're passing it out into these data structures. And these data structures are there to hold the data, and they can be part of a pipeline. Um, what's key is that they're not actually a plot in the sense of a, a figure um, as that you might have in a typical library. Um, so here we have, for example, all these different types of things. You have uh, overlays, which were shown, and points, and so on. Um, and what I want to talk about is that this is a completely flexible system whereby you can actually uh, generate any kind of plot that you want from these elements and build up these data structures so you can kind of have a constructive approach instead of just using these methods to, uh, you know, analyze things in the way that Philip showed you just now. So, um, for instance, we, here we have something called points. That's an example of something that we call elements, which are atomic uh, components of holoviews. So uh, I'll show you some of those, uh, and then I'll show you how they can be put together. So let's just, here we go. So uh, note that everything was done in bokeh uh, up till now, but holoviews, because it's just data structures that have rich representations, you can actually switch your back end. And all these elements, what, they're the same elements that you'd see before, except in this particular web page, you're seeing them as they would be rendered, a lot of them, uh, as they would be rendered, let me just try and. That works, yeah. Okay, uh, as they would be rendered by uh, matplotlib. So we have quite a library of these things. Uh, and each of these things just take a little bit of data, some information about how your, the dimensionality of the data maps to the representation, um, and then you get some sort of uh, visualization. So you can see that we have uh, points, scatters, spikes, we have all sorts of things, vector fields, um, special histograms that go on the side of your plots to show distributions and such, uh, 3D, and so on. I mean, there's a lot of these uh, right through here. So how could you use this? Well, if we go back to what we were seeing earlier, this is the X-ray um, plot, which was about uh, air temperature. But you can't really tell where it was. This is actually of the United States. Uh, so it'd be kind of nice to have an outline of the US to know exactly what we're looking at. So uh, what we can do, for instance, is uh, look through all the different elements, and there's an index at the top. Just get there. Um, and what we want, for instance, if you browse through it, is something called path, where you can actually uh, draw lines and draw, draw shapes, um, and what you can do is then overlay them. So let's do that for this example. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just taking a, a NumPy file, which is on disk, uh, you'll see it in a second, there we go. And this is just X, Y positions. And if you, if you have the right format, you just stick it in a uh, path element, and you can see the, the, the United States. Now, uh, I should say that you can actually use other things. You don't have to use NumPy, you can use X-Array, you can use uh, data frames and so on. All that matters is you supply the data in a suitable format, you give a little bit of information, uh, and then you, and you get the element. But this is not what we want. What we want to do is actually see this in context of, of the temperature data. So to do this, we use an operator called uh, the, uh, the overlay operator. So uh, you take two of the elements, you use mul, which is just what we've overloaded uh, for this, and you just take the two, mull them together, and then you get the same thing with the interactivity, with the ability to select things, drop down menus, sliders, whatever, but now you're just taking whatever you had and just showing it on top of uh, the other thing. So uh, now we can actually see the same thing again, and you can browse through it, um, in context of, what, of, of this outline. Now, uh, there's another operation. This is one important thing, so, you know, putting things into the same space so you can actually look at them uh, in the same space and on the same axes. But there's another operation which is called the layout. Uh, and this is, again, something incredibly common, and you see it all the time, and therefore you want to um, make it very easy. When you use plus, you put two things side by side. And what, what's happening here is you're creating a data structure. I can actually show you. Um, Right, 
Ash to print it. Uh, oh well, never mind. You can see that there's a wrapper, and if I actually use print, you'd actually uh, uh, see it much more nicely than this. But it's called, something we call a low overlay. And what it does is, is basically a group of the two things that we had, and you put it together. So what we've put together here are two completely different types of data. There was the uh, animal data set we taught, saw earlier, which was about you know, uh, animals and their properties, and it was based on the pandas data frame, so columns. And then we have the thing on the right, which is a completely different type of data, um, which is about air temperature, and it's sort of raster and gridded data. And you can put these two types of things together, create a data structure that has this representation, which unlike things like the, uh, for example, the Seaborn methods, you can take anything from anywhere and combine it, build them up into uh, new data structures and so on. So that didn't work very well. But right. um, now I want to talk about something else. You can build these data structures, but you might think, you know, how do you change what they look like? Uh, is this uh, how it always has to look this way, or can I change it from the defaults? And pretty much everything you've seen can be changed in, in, in some way. So um, you've actually seen this in the notebook already. You have this uh, percent percent opts. This is a, an IPython magic, cell magic. And you can use this to customize anything that's already been shown. So uh, Holoviews kind of has this separation between uh, content and presentation, uh, just kind of like HTML and CSS whereby uh, you can create the data structures, look through them quickly, use the defaults, but as soon as you want to move to publication, you're going to want to tweak things, you're going to tweak the line width. So, for example, in this one, we have the, the US, uh, but I don't like this color blue for the, for the path. So I can now address that, um, and we have this option system, whereby I can say, for the path, I actually want to use color black. And this is using matplotlib as a back end. So all, that, all that's happening is that this is being passed through to, to matplotlib to tell it that this path is actually going to be rendered in black. Uh, okay. So there we go. Uh, it's become black as, as requested. And this is something called a style option. So this is just passed straight, straight to the back end. So if you use bokeh, you might have a few different uh, um, terms used there. Uh, and that's just like a, just passed straight through the back end to whatever is rendering the plot. So that's how we can be agnostic to the back end. There's another type of thing which is called uh, Plot options, I won't talk much about them, but the instructions to Holoviews how to construct the plot, so uh, sort of more global type things. Now, I'll try one more thing, which is showing the tab completion, whereby this is a bit thin, so let's just uh, tab complete, uh, let's go to line width, and I don't know, something like five, let's run that again, a bit thick, um, right. yeah, something like that. So again, this is just an example of me going back, customizing what, what, what's being shown after this data structure has been created. So it's just annotating uh, the, the, the way you want to show something. The other thing I should say quickly is you can switch between Bokeh and Matplotlib at any time, and you might want to do that. So if you want to do a publication, um, you might have to switch to Matplotlib because you want to get some vector output, you want to get an SVG, and, and you might not be able to do that with Bokeh. So that's, um, there's one more thing I'll show you, which is, uh, Bokeh based, which is you can actually set things like uh, tools, Bokeh tools in the option system. So you can now hover over your, your points uh, and you can actually get information straight out of it. Um, uh, so you can actually specify some of the Bokeh functionality with the option system uh, to customize how you interact with your plot. So I'll go back to the slides at this point. Um, right. Is that showing? Yeah. Okay. So I want to now emphasize the difference between Hollow views and some of these other libraries. Uh, if you're working with a, a plotting library directly, you're gonna open a figure, you're gonna do a ton of imperative plotting calls, you're gonna eventually show your data, right? And all that time is, is often getting in the way of things, because you wanna explore things immediately. You wanna see what it looks like now, you don't wanna worry about running plotting code. Um, and in a way, uh, it's kind of wasted time in a sense, because every time your data changes a lot, you're gonna have to write more plotting code. Um, so you're, 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 a lot of your effort is about building these visualizations instead of just looking at your data. Now what Holoviews achieves is by building these data structures which are nested, which are very rich and flexible, you just spend your time annotating your data. You spend your time saying that, uh, saying what kind of dimensions are, are there, saying a little bit about the structure of the data, and then annotating it. And when you do that, you're keeping all your, your information in the main pipeline uh, that you're working through, and the visualizations kind of come for free, for free. So every time you hit a cell in the notebook, you, you, you hit shift enter, What's happening is in the background, the figure's being created, all the plotting uh, is actually getting executed, and then it's getting shown to you. So uh, what it really does is it helps you improve your, your, uh, your efficiency, especially when you think about all the interactive features that we also offer. So 
I'll now talk a little bit about some other, uh, just conclude, and I'll talk a little bit about some of the other projects we have. Uh, when I showed you the US map uh, over in the air temperature back in the notebook, I wouldn't recommend you do it that way because if you want to do geographic projections correctly, you need to use proper projections. You need to know about the curvature of the Earth and how you project into 2D space. So we actually have an extension of Holoviews called GeoViews. And if you're interested, visit it at uh, geo.holoviews.org, where we uh, essentially support this kind of thing for all the different elements that we, we have. So this is just two examples whereby you can actually project things properly. Um, I think that's about it. That's around 20 minutes. So uh, yes, um, there's a lot more that I've not really discussed about Holoviews. But uh, in terms of data exploration, I think that, that covers the main points. Um, we, we have a website, which is holoviews.org. There's lots of tutorials on there. Uh, lots of notebooks you can go through. And as I said, there's also geo.holoviews.org, which is a new project. It should be released very, very soon. And everything's public. You can actually download it now. But if you want the official release, you should just wait a few more days. And lastly, we have a, a, a Gitter channel uh, where we, we're, we're there on all the time, and you can discuss things with us. Um, and lastly, uh, just an advert for the Continuum Happy Hour. Um, so do drop by. We'll be there. You can talk to us there. And uh, that's... Uh, uh, six to nine, and there's a, a link uh, to, to reply to if you're interested in that. So uh, with that, uh, is there any questions? Yeah. Um, yes, everything, every, we can actually go through this notebook and run matplotlib everywhere. And uh, everything would just be using matplotlib. What do you want to say? I'm just running. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, yeah? Yeah, we do yes. that too. Yes. We have a little call. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, the question was, can we do static HTML files? And everything that uh, is in Holoviews is not really dependent on the notebook environment. Uh, I mean, we integrate very well with it, but uh, it's all basically JavaScript and HTML, and we can always output things to to make templates, ginger templates, this kind of thing. Uh, and you could create uh, other things. So we've, we have a bit know. of documentation coming on that front. Uh, it's very notebook centric currently. So right. which is cool. uh, I also quickly want to mention GeoViews is based on Cartify, which is uh, right. I should have advertised Cartify <laughs> as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Geo Holoviews stuff. Is that using Cartify? It's using Cartify. Cartify. So we can repeat that it's Cartify. Thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> It is currently our own set of widgets, so we haven't. Uh, we're currently investigating other ways of integrating with existing widget systems. Um, currently, we don't have concrete plans to work with Matplotlib widgets, but we, we could definitely explore that. We have some limited support for MBAG, which gives you a little bit, but none of our. That's that goes only so far. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, D3 widgets. That'd be great. I'd like that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that would be nice. Um, so we're working on further backends, actually. So uh, we can always uh, uh, backend systems are fully extensible. You can write your own renderer class, which will basically integrate existing elements with new visualization types. Uh, so we, I'm currently working on a Plotly backend, um, and a D3 backend would be very welcome too. Um, yeah. Not there. Um, right. Okay, so I'll repeat the question. The question was twofold. It was asking us uh, whether we can put things into uh, sort of columns instead of rows. And the answer is yes. There's a calls uh, method. You can just call after you do plus, and you can say how many columns you want. And it just does a, a sort of scan line thing where you can uh, keep at, uh, have as many columns as you want. And right. the second part of the question was about ggplot and how it relates. And I don't know if you want to answer that bit. Yeah, uh, I don't have a good answer. It's, it's a different system. Uh, it's, sorry, uh, it's a different system, and I'm, it's, it's d different powers, and I like ggplot, so I just haven't worked with it. Um, and actually, there is, we are looking to improve our layout support uh, quite a bit.